Hi, we've saved user's data in an array list inside Singleton object. But as soon as you turn off or reboot your Android device, Singleton object will be destroyed, as well as the data inside it will be erased. So, it is not meant for saving data for a long term. In this tutorial, we will learn how to save user's data permanently by using SQLite library. SQLite is a database engine. To know more about it, please visit this website. The good news is, Android by default supports this library, and everything is prepared. Just use the helper classes. Right-click on the package directory. New Java class. Name it anything. I'll call it Users Database Helper. This class will inherit SQLite Open Helper. Check this option, Show Select Overrides dialog. Click OK. Select the first constructor method, on create and on upgrade. Click OK. In the constructor definition, remove all parameters. Just leave the context. Name the database file. I'll call it usersdatabase.db. We don't need factory object. Just pass null. And this database file is version 1. Basically, this constructor method will create a new database file, if it does not already exist. If this is the first time the database has been created, onCreate method will be called. Right now, the database file is empty. Let's create users table inside it. From database object, we will call execute SQL. To create table, name it users. The first column is an ID. Its data type is an integer. And assign primary key to it. The values in this column will be auto incremented. Create second column for storing the universal unique identifier, UUID. And two more columns for the first name and email address. Notice here. If you don't define the data type, the default will be string or variable character, and that's okay for me. If the database file is already exist, and you want to update or upgrade the structure, then change the version number and put your code in onUpgrade method. It is time to instantiate this class to create SQLite database object. Open singleton class. Create member variable of type SQLite database. On initializing the singleton object, instantiate database object from users database helper. Database object needs a context to live in. The context is either an activity or the application itself. Singleton object is called first from the list of users activity. So, once we call the singleton object, pass it the application's context, not this activity context. Because database object needs to be used in different activities and not specific for this activity. Back to the singleton. In get method, receive the application's context and pass it to the constructor. In the constructor method, receive the application's context and pass it to the database object. From users database helper class, we need to get writable database object. Make sure to update every call to singleton object. Run the application. Let's see 
where is the database file is placed. In Android Studio, show Device File Explorer window. Open Data Folder. Another data folder. Search for your applications package. Open it. As you can see, Android by default creates new folder and named it Databases. Inside this folder, we can find our user's database file get created. It is time to add rows to the database. Let's update new user method. We no longer need array list to store users. Comment this line. To insert new record, it's simple. From database object call insert method. In the first argument, specify the table name you want to insert into. In the second argument, just pass null. We don't need it here. And in the third argument, is the data you want to put in. We have to pass the data in content values object. Content values is a key value store class. We can simply create content values right here, but we are going to use it again in update method. So it is better to create method for returning content values object. Create private method to return content values. Call it get content values. Create parameter for receiving user object. Make an instance of the content values and populate content values. In the key argument, specify the column name and make sure it is the exact column name you have used in the user's table. And in the value argument, extract the data from the user object. Return content values object. Back to the new user method. And the third argument call get content values and pass it the user object. Now let's update update user method. Comment everything in this method. From the database object call update method. In the first argument specify the table name. In the second argument, call get content values and pass it the user object. We don't have user object, but we do have the data. So let's create user object. But this time, instead of creating new unique identifier, we already have it. Just pass it to the constructor. We don't have this constructor in user class. So let's create it. Go to the user class. Create new constructor. Create parameter for receiving UUID. And its member UUID is equal to the past UUID. Populate the user object. In the third argument, Specify the WHERE clause. Update users table where UUID column is equal to the placeholder. In the last argument, specify the WHERE arguments in an array string object. Let's update delete user method. Comment everything in this method. From the database object, call delete method. The first argument is the table name. The second argument is the WHERE class. Delete user where UUID is equal to the placeholder. And the last argument is the WHERE arguments in an array string object. Let's update getUser method. Comment everything in this method. To read or query data, you simply call 
query method from the database object. The first argument is the table name, and the second argument specify which column to retrieve data from it. I will set it to null to select all columns. The third argument is the where clause. Select everything from users table where UUID is equal to the placeholder. The fourth argument is the where arguments and set null for the other arguments because we don't need them here. We are reading data so create cursor object to save the query result. Create try and finally blocks. In the try block, move the cursor and make it point to the first row. Retrieve first name value from the cursor object by calling get string from the cursor object who has this column name. And do the same for the email value. Create new user, pass it the ID. Populate the user object from the retrieved values and return the user object. Whether the code in try block is executed correctly or not, always close the cursor object in finally block. The last method to update is get users method. Comment this line. We are reading data, so create cursor object to save the query result. The first argument is the table name and set everything to null. So basically you are saying select everything from users table. Create an array list to store the users data as objects. Create try and finally blocks. In the try block move the cursor to the first row and create while loop with condition if the cursor is not after the last row then pull out the data from the cursor create user object and pass it the ID but this time the ID is string value, so convert it to UUID. Populate the user object, add user object to the list, and move the cursor to the next row. In the finally block, close the cursor object, and return users list. We no longer need this array list member and the instantiation of it. We are done here. Now go to the list of users activity. As you can see, users list is not saved in the singleton object. Its main responsibility is just to retrieve the data from the SQLite database. Users adapter is created one time at the creation of this activity and we passed it the user's list. We want the adapter to reload its content once we have added, updated, or deleted user's record. So, in user's adapter, create new public void method. Let's call it set users to receive the new reloaded list of users from the database. Then, assign it to its member list. In onActivityResult method, if the result has been set, reload the list of users from the SQLite database and tell the adapter object to reload its content as well. That's it. Run the application. Let's add new user.
update an existing user. Delete user. That's all. I hope it was easy to follow and helpful. Thanks for watching.